Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Sean O'Malley to defeat Piotr Jan. And I'm here to talk about Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley, UFC 292's main event. Sean O'Malley is 16 and 1, 28 years old, and he's got 4 inches of height and 1 inch of reach over 34 year old Aljo, who has a record of 23 and 3, which is the same record as Wei Li Zhang. Although I don't know how that's relevant to this matchup. Uh, Aljo, he's got one loss legitimately, and it's the Chito Vera. And even that may not be the most legitimate in some people's eyes, but it was legitimate enough for me. I mean, say what you will about his ankle, him having drop foot or whatever, but he's shown to have vulnerable ankles uh, throughout his UFC career, going back to the Andre Sukumtath fight. Uh, and in the Chito Vera fight, regardless of how they got there, on the ground, I think Cheeto knocked him out. He didn't knock him dead, send him into the shadow realm or whatever the fuck, but he, it was a brief flash knockout, whatever, but he separated him from his senses. And uh, I'm just saying that to help legitimize the loss. But uh, besides that, Cheeto, uh, uh, O'Malley's looked perfect pretty much. Aside from the Pewter Jan fight, his last fight, uh, which, you know, I mentioned, I did I did actually, I really did pick him to win and bet on him. But, of course, I didn't think that was a victory. I thought Jan won all three rounds. Uh, but still, Sean O'Malley, much like Cub Swanson the other night, fought with enough spirit where he put himself in the realm of winning a bullshit decision. So the spirit was there. Um, and he does have a lot of spirit. He has a lot of heart, Sean O'Malley. And he's got a lot of power and dangerous striking. Maybe doesn't have the sharpest, the most powerful overhand punch, but he's got really long range, really great movement and good athleticism and uh, very accurate straight punches. Just he, He's a problem at range. He uh, covers distance very well and he can throw hard for, you know, he can throw the volume and uh, keep going for three rounds. He's actually had a few third round finishes, once over Thomas Almeida, once over Chris Moutinho, and in both those fights, he could have got him, uh, gotten both those guys out of there early and started playing with his food, as they like to say, and uh, whatever, he ended up getting the finish anyway, but my point is, those could have been done in the first round, as he got Holly and Paiva and Eddie Wineland and uh, Jose Albert Quinones out of there, got Quinones with the head kick, but uh, straight punches on Eddie Wineland and uh, Holly and Paiva, and I uh, just uh, rocked those guys. O'Malley, uh, I'd say he does have an advantage on the feet against Aljamain Sterling, although Aljo covers distance very well. He's a very solid athlete himself, and Aljo used to just be good with rangy kicks, but now the last few years, even before he won the title, he had turned a corner uh, with his hands. You know, I always go back to him roughing up uh, Jimmy Rivera. But grappling is Aljo's uh, bread and butter. And he should have an advantage over Sean O'Malley there. Even though I've seen Sean O'Malley tap Gomi, uh, you know, in the, uh, he tapped Takanori Gomi in Quintet Ultra, whatever the fuck. I've seen him grapple Gilbert Melendez. I know he's not just some basic striker guy. You know, he's a well-rounded fighter, deceptively well-rounded. But I don't think there's enough, de enough deception there to uh, make a play on Aljamain Sterling, uh, grappling-wise. Aljo is the best grappler in the division, he is a freak of a grappler, not just conventional, but he's a really good long limbs, uh, one of the best back takers, and he's got just suffocating control from on top and certainly on your back. He has 23 wins, 3 via TKO, 8 via submission, 11 via decision, and then 1 via DQ. You may remember that one. And uh, his 3 losses, he's got 1 via knockout and 2 via decision. I'll just go to the losses first. Marlon Marais knocked him dead. Knocked him dead with a knee. I think he was throwing a kick and he landed the knee. One of those weird ones. And he uh, knocked him out. Uh, Aljamain Sterling has not been hurt too often. He's a guy that's shown to be pretty healthy. But that was the kill shot. And it might have just been the perfect shot. But uh, you know, as far as knockouts go, that one was uh, on the brutal side. And the two decision losses are very close fights to uh, Brian Caraway and uh, Rafael Sonsal, especially the Caraway fight. Uh, that was 
Brian Caraway just being a niftier grappler. You know, Aljamain Sterling was better and was more dominant, certainly early on, but Caraway just uh, protected himself and reversed Aljo at the right moments where he secured more top position, and he made Aljo pay down the stretch. But Aljamain Sterling, as of now, I mean, he looks like the perfect fighter. He got that revenge over Piotr Jan after Piotr Jan kneed him in the head in round four. In the rematch, even though it was still a very close fight, I did think Aljo won, and he won by not only having dominant rounds early, but also surviving down the stretch with Piotr Jan. He didn't let Jan get him out of there when Jan started to take over. And uh, Aljo, as a champion, he's uh, scratch and call for some victories. The Piotr Jan won, the Henry Cejudo fight in his last one. That was really close. But again, Aljamain Sterling won by, by winning the grappling battle. And that was most impressive because Henry Cejudo has never been out-wrestled. But Aljo was the one guy that could do it, which speaks to the level of wrestler we're talking about here. And uh, his... His other uh, wins as of late, even though they're not all championship wins, he's looked incredible as well. Corey Sanhagen, Pedro Munoz, TJ Dillashaw, that was a championship performance, and he just steamrolled him, injury or not. I think Aljamain Sterling, if he wins this fight, it's going to be a dominant performance, and it's going to end up with him getting a finish. And I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, Aljamain Sterling, he's always going to have that uh, double leg, he's always going to be in range of getting O'Malley to the ground because he closes the distance so well, and he's only giving up one inch of reach. And uh, I think the fact that O'Malley is a longer, taller guy, in general, that makes it easier for a guy to take you down. And I think Aljo is going to have an easier time than most taking him down and climbing all over him, you know, kind of like he did to uh, Corey Sanhagen. And Aljo, getting him down is the pick. I think he's going to be very heavy on top. And I don't think it'll happen straight up in round one like it did for Sanhagen. But I think it'll happen, you know, in the middle of the fight. Maybe even the first half of the fight. Round two or round three. And I think there's a good chance it's a TKO. I said this when he fought TJ Dillashaw. And I say this as well against Sean O'Malley. A submission wouldn't surprise me because Aljo is much more likely to get a submission just uh, looking at his record. But here I think the story is going to be the back mount, how heavy he is on top. And a TKO, if you can find those odds at, uh, you know, uh, twice as long as the submission odds, it might be worth a sprinkle because I think there's a good chance he gets a TKO over Sean O'Malley. Just wins the positional battle, is too heavy on top, taking his back, and pounds the shit out of him. That's the pick, Aljamain Sterling. I guess I'll go with the TKO, but submission, of course, wouldn't surprise me at all. And I'll say it happens in round two. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.